بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا وبعد First of all I would like to welcome our special guest today Dr. Hani Al-Banna he will be with us today uh, inshallah ta'ala and it is it will be golden opportunity for all of us to benefit from his experience and knowledge so we changed the agenda of the meeting so dr hani will be with us inshallah for the next two hours and we would like to hear from you all your big and difficult questions because as we always say the big people they expect from you big questions so please prepare your questions and this opportunity might not yani it is really cannot happen uh, frequently so please benefit from it as much as uh, you can uh, dr hani al banna he is the founder of islamic relief Currently, he is the chairman of the Humanitarian Forum, Muslim Charities Forum. And as you know, he is one of the leaders in the sector, not only in the UK or Turkey, but mashallah, his work covered most of the world. May Allah bless him and give him long life. He agreed to be with us and to give us two hours from his valuable time. So please benefit from him. Dr. Hani, we have here with us the team in Turkey. This team, we have around 40 people here. I think the team around 50. And uh, uh, we are proud of this team who have been working 24 seven to deliver and help our brothers and sisters inside Syria. So they really, looking to hear from you and to benefit from your knowledge and experience. So, Dr. Hani, you have 20 minutes to 25 minutes to speak in the beginning. And then whatever point you can cover in the beginning, then we can take the other points during <coughs> the discussion, uh, inshallah ta'ala. I received some requests that we need to divide the meeting into two means English and Arabic. So we will start the meeting in English and then we give a priority for those who want to ask in English. Then after that, we'll start the meeting in Arabic. Dr. Hani. Alhamdulillah. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate you not only of being observing the holy month of Ramadan and now we are ending the second third of Ramadan. The first third was Rahma, mercy. The second is Maghfira. And inshallah, at the end of the week, we'll start the third third the, of Ramadan, which is to be protected from hellfire. Amen. This is the first congratulation. Second congratulation is to congratulate you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as human beings to become custodian of the universe, the sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. The second congratulation. Third congratulation is Allah with his help and the guidance and the belief in our hearts made us Muslims. Made us Muslims. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah that Allah made us Muslims and Alhamdulillah that Allah let us to choose Muhammad وسلم, to be our teacher, the teacher of humanity. The fourth congratulation to you is Allah has chosen you to be the chosen people who will be raising the hopes and the morality for humanity. In the Allah Allah has certain category of people. He led them to love the act of goodness, like yourself. And he led the acts of goodness to love them. 
as if the act of goodness is another human being or another being. And now they are you, you are the being will be saved from the punishment of Allah and protected from her fire on the day of judgment. So for congratulations for you in Ghazi Antab, in Antakya, in uh, Orfa, in Istanbul, whatever you call it. So I congratulate you very much for this. I'm trying to find a fifth congratulation for yourself is your wisdom. Your wisdom will come from many resources, one of which is Allah has given it to you as a privilege. The second, from as much reading and knowledge you have. The third, as much tiredness and fatigue you have when you keep mixing with the poor people and trying to find a solution for the problem. So you are a five dimension individuals, five dimension individuals, five congratulations to you, inshallah. Is it clear? So life cannot be life unless there's a challenge. Allah has created heaven for you, alhamdulillah, and life for all of us. During life, we have to struggle hard to make it habitable and inhabitable for every and anybody, including animals, birds, plants, everything, every creation of Allah. That's why we construct life and to preserve life and to save the lives of the others while we are living on this planet. So our nature is absolutely totally different from our nature in heaven when you go there, inshallah, and you invite me. Here's the struggle, here's fatigue, here's challenge, here's pain, and here's suffering, and here's killing, and here's corruption, here's everything. But the lucky ones like you who will choose to be with the people of Allah all the time, 24-7, to enable him, to the people, the poor people will enable him or her to be saved at the day of judgment. So congratulations you, your five dimension people. You are five dimension people, but only three dimension people. Our life when we go to heaven will be peace, satisfaction, comfort, joy, no hardship, no killing, no backbiting, no the corruption, no Nothing of these bad things. So because Allah will change our nature when we go there into uh, heaven, inshallah. Say, Ameen. Ameen. So the angels with us now, with every one of us, is surrounded by multiplicity of the numbers of the angels that are listening and wondering, what are those people doing? These people in Antakya, in Manchester, in Ghazi Antab, in uh, this flat, this flat, this Birmingham, they are connecting. For what? We are connecting to show Allah our love to Him through our action of saving and caring and helping our people. Inshallah, whether it's in Syria or any part of the world. So the angels will write what you do and they will film maybe what they see of you. Beautiful scene. I can see the 40 spots on the horizons of the vicinity of humanity, of the planet. And in this horizon of the vicinity of the planet or the planets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be seen and wondered. The angels will be wondering how on earth that you can see all those people connecting. Subhanallah. Say subhanallah for yourself. Because what you are doing is an incredible work. Coming back to say nine years of the struggle and the agony and the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Syria is incredible time of achievement for all of you. People are suffering and you are achieving what you are achieved to eliminate to decrease and to change the suffering into joy and happiness. 
We are not going to stop. We are not going to stop. We are not going to stop helping, standing, delivering, promoting, sending messages of the people who are suffering at the moment in this place, in Syria, inside Syria, or outside Syria. Why? Because our work is the message of a messenger. So each one of you is a messenger following the Prophet as the, as the leaders of all messengers. Our work is a mission and the burden and the responsibility only carried by the people who believe in it. It's a vision, a vision to see happiness, joy, comfort, uh, uh, tranquility and peace and satisfaction to see it through the smiles on the faces of the children and the widows and the women and the elderly and the sick. When they see you coming, say, oh, my sister, oh, my brother, oh, my family. So mission, vision, message and responsibility. Our, our, our act is not a job. Never take it as a job. Never, ever take the job. Our act or our job is a lifelong mission. From cradle to death, even after death, it goes down with us into our place in the graveyard to see the reward. To see the people surrounding us by their blessings, subhanallah. So nine years, we should not become fed up. We should not lose hope. We should not become despaired. Never, ever, 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 ever. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as all, as you all know, stayed in Mecca 13 years. His people were tortured and killed in Mecca. And the first martyr was a woman, Rajallah uh, Anha, Sumayya, and her husband. And you have seen it, and he never gave up. And he told his uncle, Oh, my uncle, with the name of Allah, if they put the moon or the, the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand to Leave this deen, I will never leave it and they will never give up till Allah let it become obvious for everybody and spread everywhere or I die before I do that. So I put this big challenge to all the Qurayshites, to the, all the Kuffar of Quraysh, telling them never, ever, you will never, ever made me to stop spreading the act, spreading the act of goodness, the act of goodness, helping, sharing, caring, thinking, delivering, producing, and saving humanity. He was thinking about every and each one of you today. When he was sitting at the shade of Kaaba, say, I would love to see my beloved ones. The companion of the Prophet Sallallahu told him, aren't we your beloved one? said, no, it's not you. It's people who are believing in me without seeing me. That you, each and every one of you, and I'm pointing my fingers to all of you and the others. The act of them will be equivalent to the act of 50 of the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu he was talking about you in Gaziantep. He was talking about you in Manchester. He was talking about you in Antakya. He was talking about you everywhere. Wherever you go, whenever you go, because he dreamt about seeing you. Alhamdulillah. So he's very proud of you. Now, and now, you know, the angels are very proud of you. The people are very proud of you. And Allah is very proud of you because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is our guidance. This is the pride we take from our relation to the people, to Allah, to the Prophet, and to the cause that we are standing for. Today, I'd like to remind myself about a mission or a message and to remind myself who is my master in this field work. 
or this uh, field that you are working on. It is, it is not Uthman. It is not the board of trustees in Manchester or London. It's not the donor. It's not, it's not, it's not. It is the poor, deprived, displaced, the refugee, raped, sick, elderly, or prisoner, or detainee, or tortured. Those people, because of them, who are here. And those people, because of them, who have organization. And those people, because of them, who have our jobs. So the master of each and every one of us is the little miserable young boy with a sticky eyes and running nose and bare foot and wearing maybe no clothes. If she was in Africa or if she was in Africa, as we can see them everywhere. So never, ever, never, ever forget who is employing us and who is paying our salaries, the orphans, the widows, the displaced, and the needy, the masakeen and the fuqara. We are employed by the poor people. So we have to relate our condition, our life condition, to the condition of their life and try to raise up the standards of the living to come closer to the standard of the living of in our life. So who is our employee? Is those people that I'm talking about. So why should I give up a job which opens all the gates of heaven? I'll be stupid. I'll be deaf. I'll be blind. I'll be mad if I give it up. I'll be blind and mad and stupid if I become if I, suffer, if I become complaining. Because the more I suffer during this hardship of the of the worst or the worst hardship of the people inside Syria, that the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward me and the more of dua coming from them to me to bless my life, my family's life, and my life in the life to come. They call Muhammad Sallallahu names. Madman, magician, uh, poet, po 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 poet, and, 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 and. This root used to throw dirt on his head. He never gave up. He never gave up. He never gave up. This is not, this nine years remind me of the 950 years of da'wah of Prophet Noah, alayhi salam. And how many people embraced Islam with them? Khalil, few. Few. He was spreading da'wah during day and night everywhere in open market, in closed market, in the evening, in social clubs, going place to place to place. And wherever he goes to see people, you know what people used to do? Oh my God, he is coming again. You see, you see people, you know he's coming again. What is this man? Give us peace of mind. Go away. He used to cover their heads. He used to plug their ears, not to listen to him. But this did not, did not, did not, did not stop him delivering the message and accomplishing his mission because he loved it, because he believed it, and he was doing exactly the same like you doing it now. He was making this big boat, building it, and everybody was laughing at him. What is this man doing? What, what, what's he doing? An inspiration and guidance and wahi from Allah could not be understood by the kafir. That there's a big flood is coming to this area. Like now, we could not be able to understand the small, miserable looking virus is stopping movement globally. A virus which is extremely, yani, cannot be seen, is weak. Is weak, but he's killing us. He took the life of more than 280,000. His look is, is, is clothing, 
yeah, put us, uh, put in this condition as we are in the detention camp. If you go out, we have to cover our nose and mouth. We have to have the social distance. We have not to talk to this, not to talk to this, not to talk to this, and to have, yani, uh, to think back about our life and how much time we have been wasting of our, of our life over the last 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 or 40 years. Small, miserable virus. The flood of Noah came and they took all the people who are bad people. What happened to the, to the, to the villages of Prophet Lut, السلام, same, same. What happened to Pharaoh and his army in Egypt, same. Moses saved, Lot is saved, Noah is saved, but the bad ones are dead. But now, do we stop working while we are locked down inside our houses? No way. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever stop working. Because while we are sitting in our houses, we can connect and communicate with the whole world. Few days ago, I was, you know, I was with home with a few volunteers from Idlib. They were using small telephone to connect with me. I wish that you can take them to be to become some of your employees or your volunteers in Idlib. And it was nearly for one and a half hour or two hours. Connection is there. There is no excuse for me of not helping while I'm sitting at home. Not working while I'm sitting at home, not communicating while I'm sitting at home, not delivering while I'm sitting at home, not spreading my message when I'm sitting at home. It's not like the good old days that I have to go from door to door to door to door to door, from town to town, from village to village, from street to street, from shop to shop. No, now it is this. Oh, this one. To believe me, but I'm Android. You are actually an uh, iPad. What are you? Uh, okay. Get, gets me everywhere. Use the technology and do not be used by the technology. Worship Allah, not the Facebook, not the Instagram, not the WhatsApp. Use it as a tool. So to be very honest, during what's happening nowadays, what? We should work. We should work and we should ask Allah, we should thank Allah, making hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of giving us the ability of understanding the technology and enabling us to communicate and connect with everyone. Our work should be doubled or tripled or quadrupled. Our work should be doubled or tripled or quadrupled. And I envy you. I wish I was as young as you are. I wish I was as good, have good health as you are. And I wish I was having the same job that Allah has given you. Because in Allah ibadan, ikhtasam biqada hawaij al nas, habbabahum ila al khair, wa habbab al khair ilayhim, innahum, inshallah, inshallah, antum al aminuna min adab Allah yamdam. It's you that Allah has chosen you to do, to, 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 to carry on this task. To carry on this task and to get all this enormous amount of blessing from people even that you have not seen, you have not met, and you have no relationship with them. I love you. May Allah bless you. And Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hani, for this strong and uh, inspirational message to our team in Turkey, Syria, and here in the UK. Uh, just before we start the questions, Dr. Hani, uh, Dr. Ayman, uh, our chairman, uh, he just uh, joined uh, the meeting. Uh, he has to pay. It's not free. Ask him to pay a ticket. I will. I will, of course. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, go on. Uh, we very much, Dr. Hani. Dr. Thank Hani. You. Dr. Ayman, please. Yeah. Dr. Ani, thank you very much indeed for this really inspirational uh, and uh, rousing uh, comments that you have made. And we really appreciate your presence with us and your advice and your immensely valued experience has always been an inspiration to us all. 
not only to our staff on the ground, but also to every single one of us who is involved in um, in, in giving and in uh, humanitarian work. Uh, Dr. Hani is Ghaniyun uh, Tarif, as we say in Arabic, doesn't need anybody to introduce him. He is uh, the shining light for any uh, Muslim charity on the, in, in, in the UK and in Europe and probably in the world. So thank you very much for all that you said. And I have to say, I would very strongly second uh, what uh, Dr. Hani had said about the importance of us carrying on doing what we're doing. You guys on the ground are doing a fantastic job. You are um, delivering aid and help to those who most need it, particularly, particularly at this very difficult time now with social isolation, the risk of the disease, and all that kind of worry that every single person inside Syria, particularly in the camps and in the, in the amongst the displaced communities, are actually living that fear every single day. And uh, it is up to us all to work very hard to ensure that they receive everything they need, the basic stuff that we have always been delivering, but also on top of that, the extra that uh, the current environment uh, requires as well. And I have to say, from my constant and daily discussions with uh, Uthman, I am always in awe and in absolute uh, wonder uh, of the fantastic work that the team in Turkey and inside Syria are performing. And of course, uh, you must know that the team in Manchester are there for you we are there to support you and back you up because you are what make our organization what it is today. You are what makes Syria Relief the, um, the, the pilot in delivering aid inside Syria. I'm really very grateful. I can pass on back to uh, Uthman to carry on with the meeting. I will unfortunately have to leave in a few minutes because I have to go to work. Um, and I'm doing a, a late shift today, so I do apologize. I wish I could stay longer with you, but I have to, to leave very shortly. Thank you very much again, uh, Dr. Hani. Over to you, Osman. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ayman. And just for you to know, my brothers and sisters, Dr. Ayman is one of those always since the start of the crisis in the front line. Remember last time we discussed the front line. So Dr. Ayman is in the front line and works 24 7 to help those who need the help in the hospitals and different places in the uk thank you dr ayman thank you very uh, much. Uh, I, I shall leave you now thank you uh, dr hani we will open now the floor to the team to ask questions so now as i said in the beginning we will have questions in english and let me take the first question from Hamdi. Hamdi, Dr. Hani is our country director, man of wisdom there. He is trying his best, mashallah, to lead the team there in Turkey. Hamdi will give you the first opportunity to ask your one of your questions, not all of them, one. <laughs> Hamdi. Thank you, thank you, Osman. And uh, we hope that Dr. Ayman is protecting himself as well as he's protecting others. And again, thank you for this opportunity uh, to have Dr. Hani and uh, meet directly with the team. It's a great opportunity uh, to be inspired by this long and wonderful experience in many continents, uh, responding to different uh, emergencies uh, on conflict and in many con con many con continents and countries. Very briefly, I would like to get your opinion about what what we, as civil society organization, in the middle of this COVID crisis, what we you know. I mean, you mentioned that we have to do more. We are trying to do more, but we also there are uh, there is another role that we would like to work with other colleagues inside Syria and in the sector here. What would you advise us? What would this more look like 
in, in addition to what we have in the middle of this crisis? Alhamdulillah, I think uh, there's a proverb which we developed called connection is protection. The more we connect, the more we communicate, the more we disseminate information to our colleagues inside the organization, to our colleagues in different organization, the more the sector will be protected. The time, uh, first of all, let me say, Dr. Hamdi, uh, that uh, any organization is owned by the community, is owned by society, is owned by the public. This is number one. It's not owned by family unless, 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 unless you have a foundation for your family and you take the money of your family to spend it. But once you start to touch the public money, you're, our organization and our job is being accountable to the public. Civil society organization and civil society sector should be accountable for uh, from the beginning to the end to any individual citizen in the country, whether he is or she is a refugee or displaced or whatever you call it. This is a fact. So before the, any crisis, we are not just obliged. We have, we have, we have, whether we are inside crisis or not, to connect and communicate and build partnership, to save money, to save effort, and to have better impact and stronger impact on the society that we claim that we are safe. This is in the normal time, not in the time of crisis like what we are saving, seeing nowadays. At a time of crisis like this, we have to intensify this kind of connectivity and transparency to our people inside as well as to our partners outside. Cannot do it alone. If you tell me that Syria Relief have hundred million dollar, I said, so what? If you tell me that World Vision have got four billion dollar, I said, so what? Hundred times so what? Problems need more cooperation to save money and to deliver what we need in an impactful way with less time and with less money spent and with less effort. Unfortunately, Brother Hamdi is our ego, 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 which led me to start come closer to worshiping the name of my organization, closer to worshiping the logo of organization, and closer to sideline everybody and telling them, I am the first. I am the best, we are there. This is not whether during the time of Corona, before or after the time of Corona. Because we are, yani our organization is made by the public, not made by the individuals. Individual could be leading it, but the public, because they give the money, are the, are the main, main, sh main shareholder of building our organization. Yes, we should. Yes, we should. And we should actually discover, we should explore new volunteers, new platforms, new opportunities, and make the change. Because we don't know how, how long this uh, 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 pandemic will last for. Might, might not end at the end of the year. Might go to the 2021, 2022. Are we ready? Have we made plan to take our organization to stand up for another year or two or three with this climate, with this and with this uh, new change in our uh, the style of our life by working from home will be the normal in the future? Will the social distances that we are actually uh, practicing it now will be the normal? Will these social distances will lead to family this fragmentation, the bigger family that actually cannot hug your brother, she cannot hug her sister, yani all this call, or she, you cannot actually shake the hand with you actually your, your colleagues and brothers and sisters, all this kind of thing. Let us to be able to think and think and think again and again and again of how we are going to face this pandemic while we are inside it and when we get out of it. 
because now we're not using, we have not been used to sit at home for a month or two or three, but we're going to get used to this. Will this become a, the norm of our life or not? All these kind of things will put pressure on us, much pressure on us, much pressure on us to connect, to be transparent, to be honest, and to be trustworthy, not only with our donors because they give us money, but with our actually uh, the people that we claim that are serving us who are really our employers. Yes, we Thank must. You. Thank you, Dr. Hani. Any other questions, guys? May I have my one more question? Introduce yes, yourself. Uh, this Thank is Ezgi Aydın. Yes, um, I'm the op operations manager in Syria Relief Turkey. Uh, as all of us know, we have some challenges, uh, especially dealing with uh, the governments. Uh, sometimes, you know, we are facing some governmental issues in, in Turkey. Um, and I know that I, I had the chance to attend some of the platforms um, like humanitarian submit before. There are some key messages to the governments from those platforms. Um, do you think that are those messages delivered to right places? Do you think that the governments are taking lessons from those messages? Or yani sometimes we feel that uh, really uh, the governments are not taking those messages from the civil societies. Just wanted to hear your opinions about this. Thank you. Uh, it's always like that. The relations sometimes, I'm not talking about Turkey now, I'm talking about generally. Yeah. Between governments and civil society is not very well received by government officers. I tell you an example. The World Humanitarian Summit of 2016, which happened in Turkey, in Istanbul, 24 years ago. I think Osman was there and were preparing a lot of work shop for it. We found from the very beginning, from the very beginning, from the very beginning, a resistance from government, 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 personnel and leaders even to participate 60 countries or less came to istanbul in 2016 out of 180 countries okay officials i mean not all of them were the presidents or the prime ministers or the kings or the queen but they just sent representation some of those government officials say but United Nations is a government organization. What, why should we sit down with you? During the preparation for the summit, Sister Isgi, I have been receiving this. People did not want to, of a government official didn't even to sit down with you, to talk to you. Why? You know what, Sister Isgi? They don't know that people like me and you and others are the people who are employing those officials from the president the king, the queen, the sheikh, because we are the public. They don't want to understand. They don't want to accept this. How to overcome this problem? We have to keep building bridges. Because some of the government could feel that civil society organization could become a threat to their policy, threat to their uh, vision, threat to some corruption could be happening by this individual minister or this individual minister or this individual uh, uh, director and whatever it is. Any state has its state institution, independent, independent, independent. Governments should not twist the, the state institution, the arm of the state institution. The state institution has to protect the whole country and to keep the state in a sound situation. Next to the state institution, we have the government as an executive uh, power. We have the private sector. And we have the civil society organization. Those three pillars are essential tri 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 tripartite organizations to cement the strength of the country itself. And behind them, 
will be the state institution, which is which the public are not dealing with it on a daily time. So the role of the civil society organization, Sister Isgi, is to stop the bad relation would be happening between the private business and the, 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 the government officers. You are like the barrier in the middle. Because you claim or we claim that we are here for the civil the civilians, for the uh, uh, sector, for the needs of the needy. So we have to be, be stop this kind of uh, unhealthy relation between the private business and the government. That's why sometimes you can see you as, as a demon. Because there's quite often some bad government officers and they don't want to listen to you on advocacy, on human rights issues, on uh, fighting corruption, on theft, all these kind of things. But what we need to do is keep building, building, building bridges and keep providing the governments and the government officers with information which, you may, which is not secret. You should make it public to them. And build the bridge, no matter how long it will take. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sudan. Yes. Any other question? Yeah. Yes. May I? Sorry. Go, Go ahead. Who is this? Yeah. Yeah. I have a Muhammad spot. May I ask a question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, out of your experience in the emergency responses and all over the world. How can we make the emergency response a swift response? Because as you know, we have a policy, we have procedures need to be applied. We don't want to tweak this policy and procedures, but we want to have the response immediately implemented or swiftly implemented uh, to reach the needy people in the suitable time, uh, especially after the crisis. And this is one point. The another point, what is the key actions or, or outputs or activity needed to be ensured in the project to, let's say, satisfy the requirement of the Islamic donors, let's say, uh, in order to ensure the continuous of the fund to keep up supporting the people in Syria. Or, or Can the I answer the first question first? Yeah. Then you can ask the first question. First question, we use in the good old days to have uh, the golden $10,000 without any meeting. How this happened, when, when I was in, in, in involved in the humanitarian work and the relief activities, I said, okay, fine. Let us have a small amount of money to be given to an officer to jump on a plane and start to go to have the fact finding and then the assessment and spend it to see how much you can money. So your organization, a part of its policy, it has to provide this kind of uh, uh, lump sum. Could it be $10,000, could it be $20,000, entirely up to the organization. It does not need uh, a board meeting. It does not need a CEO. It does not need whatever it is, because this is there for you. The only thing it needs that the organization will say, yes, we are going to respond to this crisis. Finished. If we do that, hands off from the CEO and let the, the young people or the officers to fly and start being seen effectively on the ground from day one. We were there in tsunami, if I remember, in 2005. I was there in the first, uh, it, it came in, the, in, the, in, the, in December, uh, Christmas time. And the first group of the organization went there on 26th or 27th of December. And I joined on the 1st of January 2000 and, uh, 2005. So between Christmas period and my arrival, to, and my arrival, I was what? I was the president. I was the president of the organization to be there. And actually, we had a tremor, which every one of us were running away, scared for our life. So this kind of allowance has to be there, Brother Osman. And the trustee has to sign up. Will the organization say $10,000, $20,000? Uh, 
to be seen that you are there to do something and communicate the message of need to every and each one of them. Between the time of you traveling on air to be there in any one of these areas and the time you come back, you have this one or two or three weeks disseminating information to raise more money. My example, my good example for Chechnya 1999, the last the second war of Chechnya, I went there in October, this, uh, 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 end of the October at the time, with only $10,000. Then I managed to raise me and the, 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 the country uh, representative to raise it from $10,000 to $100,000. It was a struggle because we started to see the need of the people when we went from Kabardin Balkaria to uh, uh, Sputnik camp to Grozny and coming back. By the time I came back, after one week or 10 days, started to make needs assessment, it went up from 10,000 to 100,000 to 1 million. This kind of information coming to the, to, 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 to the headquarters was there on daily basis. At that time it was faxes or telephone calls or whatever you call it. So this came at the right time. We were there to make the need assessment before the United Nations went there. We were in Grozny when there was nobody there. We were in the Sputnik camps where there's nobody there. That's why we got this authentic information to give us or to give you the credibility, okay? and to be able to, to gain the trust, not only of the Muslim donors, but of the international donors. So have this allowance in your organization, and within this period of time, maybe from the first week of disaster, till the week four, you have a concept, the paper, to go through the policy and the procedure that you want to have. Because when you go there with this small token, you will discover local partners. You would work with them. This is if you would like to have a local operation on the field. If you would like to just not to go okay, and to have to, 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 to send your money to a local partner that you know before, okay, fine, you start with the 10,000 or the 20,000 before the big policy and procedures happen. Second question, Brother Muhammad. Yeah, about I'm just trying to rephrase what I get out of your answer to have a contingency fund or stock to be ready for the implementation. The release of this fund doesn't need hierarchy decision to go ahead uh, immediately at the time of the crisis. Thank you. That's right. Other question you, is, uh, what is the, the main element or the, let's say the thing that we should ensure that is existed in the implementation of especially Islamic donors project to attract or let's say to satisfy uh, uh, the requirement of these donors because sometimes the requirement can be considered in another uh, let's say by uh, institution donor that they are not accepted yeah what are the th the key elements need to be included in the islamic project implemented to make sure that the fund will continue the support of the needy people will continue for example is it the the media the main the main focus or some kind of process, procedures? Okay. First of all, you have to have your own integrity. Maintain your integrity as an organization and respect. Don't keep running after the money. For some of those traditional donors wake up in the morning have a dream about a project, and they tell you to do this project in this area, which the people do not need it. Learn to say no. Sorry, I cannot do it. Learn to say thank you very much. You see, this is very difficult for any organization to say no, because they need the money. That's right. But learn to say no once, and they teach other organizations to say no. Because sometimes it could be looking like fools ah. of doing such a thing in front of the eyes of the international community. Some, you see, 
since 2016 for Syria, I've been receiving messages, negative messages about the food packs. Syrian displaced people inside Syria said, we don't want food packs. Give us money, we want to do some project, and whatever they call it. Even they used to sell the food pack was half the price or quarter of the price. And they have received these images of the food pack being sold in the open market because people won't like to have something. This comes from organization who actually being led blindly by the donors. Okay, not being educated by yourself. So we have to learn to raise the level of the understanding of the donors to the mechanics of the operational work field, especially in a crisis like Syria inside different places. Uh, if we if if we start to to, to build okay, uh, grouping, and these groups of organization start to say thank you, no, this is not suitable for us, the donors will listen. Unfortunately, instead of doing that and sitting out together, building a coalition, building a platform, we're building forum, each one of us will go behind their brother, uh, the sister organization, to get the money from the donor before somebody else gets it. That's why we'll never be able, we'll never be able to impact or to change the mentality of the traditional group. As I said earlier, connection is protection, and the collective effort is the solution. Collective effort is a solution. Collective effort is a solution. Thank you, Dr. Hani. Any other questions? Uh, yes, I a, yes, I have a question. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, uh, Dr. Hani. I'm Shiveria Hashmi from uh, UK, Head of Programs. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank you for the wonderful talk. Uh, very encouraging for, I'm sure, the whole staff in the Turkey office as well as HQ. Um, I just have one small brief question. Alhamdulillah, you have so much experience of working at the HQ level and obviously liaising with the country offices and the field staff and implementing partners. Uh, my question is more from the HQ perspective. Um, obviously, mashallah, uh, with the, the element of faith uh, and the uh, motivation for working for such a, a wonderful cause is there in the country offices. But how else can um, HQ work to not only motivate their staff and bring about that um, understanding that HQ is here to provide all support to their country offices, but also develop that uh, element of trust uh, as well? I mean, generally, we do our day-to-day -day tasks. We're already in communication with our country offices and the general staff. But uh, what else can we do to take that extra mile to develop that trust between HQ and the country offices, the staff members, and also build that extra uh, or feed into that extra motivation uh, so they keep on going, doing the wonderful work that they are doing? Thank you. Uh, maybe 25 years ago, I had a discussion with the head of IT. If you know him, Brother uh, Osman, Dr. Ahmed Wa'id, Ahmed Musa. You use him, he's a brain, he's a big brain. The discussion at that time, Sister Juaria bint al Haris, uh, Auntie Juaria bint al Haris, is she Juaria bint al Haris? Huh? Asman? Hiya Hashimi, remember? Hashimi. Oh, oh. <laughs> Say it, Alhamdulillah. Ya Juaria. Yes. 25 years ago, we sat down together, and the discussion was about how can we develop a program called Good Morning. Islamic League. Good morning. And to, 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 to go to everyone, including porters, cleaners, uh, cooks, and all these sort of things. Not only the country director, not only the head of program, not only, not only, to everybody. As a message, this before the before the internet came out. Okay? And this was the discussion. What you need to do is to be seen as a manager or a director that you are caring, caring, caring for the field staff. You are listening to them. You are valuing their time and their ideas and their suggestions. You are taking them seriously. 
you are not employing somebody who is less qualified than the people in the field. This is what I have seen in different organizations. A little miserable young officer sitting here or there in the headquarters and give an order to highly experienced individual with 20 to 30 years in the field work. Yes. This is wrong. It's suicidal to the organization. Travel to be with them. And when you are with them, you eat what they eat, you sit where they sit, and you talk about what they dream, and you spread their message. And you go with them to the field, not to sit in the five star hotel in the in, in the in the capital of the country okay like if, it's, if Syria is Damascus or if it's, uh, Turkey Istanbul or if it's whatever you call it it's Sudan Khartoum okay Somalia Magdishu and so on and they don't go out people want you to be seen by the most affected individuals to reform your soul and to have their souls to be reformed by yourself. If we don't do that from the headquarters down, we are a group of nuts, tasteless, shapeless, characterless, like clowns, like clowns, like clowns. So I think the duty of people in the headquarter is to give this feeling of caring and sharing to every field officer. Not only that, some of the affected people who might have a, a, a Zoom with them, what do you call it, this, this program today, uh, Google, uh, what is the name of the program? To, to, to have this kind of meeting and listen to some of those women, the widow, so they can see who is the chairman, they can see who is the CEO, they can see who is the director. And even one who go to there, the area, to be sitting with them, being honored to be seen that they are shaking our hand. This kind of tarbiya. Sister Juwariya, Al Hashimiya, Bismillah, Mashallah, uh, has to be a part of the job description. I wrote a new job description, but I have not published it yet. I wrote it last year. A part of it is the time goes from 60% to 10% for the president and CEO to have to develop himself to read, connect, communicate, and reflect. Only sitting on a desk, as a desk sitting on a desk. It goes down from the CEO, which could be 60% of his time, to 10% for the cleaner. Also, the cleaner has to provide new ideas, a new solution, and be respected when he presents is finding to the board. This kind of uh, upbringing or upgrading the cleaners is more important than, upgra uh, than upgrading his salary or her salary. Okay. Thank you, Sister Gwaleh.